One project I need to do is a lumber cart and yeah, you see why. I got lumber here, lumber, plywood. I got stuff there. I also got it over here as well and it's time to make something that's mobile, functional, and yes, has a little bit of a hidden feature just in case you need it. Hopefully it all works out. Haven't built it yet, we're getting to it now. Thanks for joining me. Is your lumber rack too small? Lots of makers have the same problem, but worry not. With the new Lumber Rack 5000, it has an extra shelf built in right to the bottom. All you gotta do is install it just like so, and then you're good to go. Extra storage when you need it. Order yours today. In all seriousness, this thing is awesome and it's mobile. So if you wanna see how I did this, stick around. This is a fun one, let's go. Got a full house at the shop tonight, but that's okay. We're gonna start off by cutting a piece of Baltic birch, three quarters of an inch, cut it roughly in half, 28 inches on one side and 32 on the other. The 28 inch side is gonna be used for the base. I'm gonna cut the 32 inch side down to three inch strips, as you see here. These are gonna be used to make the A frame and I'm gonna make three frames in total. Bit of a disclaimer, during this edit, I kept calling this thing a lumber rack, but it is a mobile storage solution for sheet goods. So I just wanna be clear about that. Again, I regret to inform anybody who's asking for plans. I probably should have made plans for this. That was one of my New Year's resolutions was to make plans for my projects. And unfortunately, I'm sorry I didn't, forgive me. But the video is the plan. And I'm just kinda, again, like I've always said in a lot of videos, following my nose. And I'm actually gonna offset this A-frame. I'm using the lines in my work table here uh, to kind of give me the measurements I need. Again, everything's being done by eye. I got a speed square, making sure things are square and perpendicular. And as you see, the A-frame is taking shape. This structure is gonna consist of three of these. I'm gonna make sure I build two of them identically, and then the third one will be built in a mirrored image because I want the two outside facings uh, to be identical. And if you don't do that, you'll have one looking like a little bit different than the other, and that's not what we want. After tacking everything in place and then countersinking screws to reinforce all those joints, I'm gonna take a jigsaw, cut out the rest of the excess of this piece, and then take a flush trim bit, just make my way and trim it up real nice and smooth. Another thing I wanna mention as well, this is pretty easy to build the mirrored image of this. You just basically stack everything on top of the existing frame, and then lather, wrench, repeat, and there's your mirrored image. I'm gonna use both of those to be on the left and the right side of this lumber rack. Okay, now you can see the piece doesn't extend all the way, so I'm just gonna temporarily put some support. That way I can run this flush trim bit all the way through and then come back, undo that support, and we got everything nice and yoked. So the most difficult part was getting this thing to be semi-assembled. Uh, these A-frames were held in place with some clamps. As you see, I got my helper involved. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna run a stretcher, as you see there, all the way through the middle of the first A, and, or the top of the A, and then we're gonna tack it in place with some brad nails. Holding everything in place with clamps, definitely a must in this situation. Then the larger of the two shelves is gonna be tacked in place on the bottom. Again, I'm gonna use brad nails, but you have to most definitely come back and countersink some screws. You don't wanna just forget about these and uh, you, you know, leave just brad nails in there. You don't want that at all. So come back with some countersunk screws. I'm just using, I think, some two inch screws here, inch and a half, something like that. And I'm gonna repeat that process on every joint, on every surface. Again, I'm not using glue for this project. I'm not really sure why. So if you have a question about that, leave it in the comments and I'll tell you, I'm not really sure why I didn't use glue, but we can start a conversation about something else. All right, with the piece turned upside down, it's now time to install the base. I'm gonna use some Jedi mind trickery here to kind of pull this back in place. I think there's probably a Star Wars joke in there somewhere, but you know, I don't wanna force it. And now it's time to make sure that the whole piece is exactly where we want it to be. Using a tape, making sure I've got even spaces all the way around. Coming back, I've made some marks here and I'm gonna take a countersunk bit, drill four holes and countersink some two inch screws all the way down. Again, no glue. And again, I'm still not sure why. All right, now it's time to add the wheels. I've decided to go with these three inch heavy duty casters from Rockler. Two of these wheels do not move left to right. They just go front to back. And the other two swivel and have locking mechanisms on there. I think this is probably the way to go with the lumber rack. I'm not sure if I want everything swiveling around and having to lock everything in place. I think two locks is the way to go. 
So therefore, after spinning it and making some noise with that thing, we're gonna go ahead and cut out some pieces that are gonna be a little bit thicker than the actual base itself. There's four in total. We're gonna simply glue these in place, glue them brads, and then once all four of these are in place, it's time to install the casters with, I'm using the hardware that wasn't included. They include some bolts. Instead of doing through bolts, I think these two inch or inch and, what, an inch and five eighths pan head screws, whatever they are, work pretty well. Now, if you look closely, I'm gonna show you the locking mechanism, how this works. It not only locks the wheel from, from moving, but it also locks the wheel from moving, if that makes sense. No, I'm kidding. It locks the wheel from rolling and it locks it from pivoting back and forth. And you can get a good look at exactly how this happens. When you engage the lock, everything just freezes up. Check that out. So here's the support piece being built that's gonna come in and out of the bottom of the rack to give you that extra support when you need it and not when you don't, right? <laughs> so I'm just gonna take a simple piece of plywood and make a base frame or a small little edge banding piece for it. That way, when you tuck it in, it doesn't go all the way through. I'm gonna do the same thing to the very bottom of the rack as well. And I'm gonna countersink everything as you're gonna see here. So now I've got a few pieces of plywood here that I'm gonna to join together at 90 degrees. You're gonna see I'm gonna make a makeshift kind of rabbit in these pieces. These are gonna be what's gonna hold the shelf in place. After countersinking these together, I need to raise them up just a little bit. So I'm gonna use some Starbond medium CA glue and accelerator to really handle this task well. I've always said Starbond CA glue is not necessarily a glue, but it's more of a tool in your shop. And again, I always pay it forward to you guys. They've offered me a coupon code if you wanna save 15%. Go to starbond.com, enter glimpse15. All the links are down below, check them out. So to keep this shelf from binding up as you take it in and out, I'm gonna space it just a little bit with some brad nails. A cluster of brad nails is all you need. It's a great thickness if you need to space something out just a little bit, definitely recommend using that. And also countersinking these two inch screws as well. I think this is gonna work. I haven't tested it yet. I'm pretty excited to get this thing flipped over and check it out. But again, you know what? People make mistakes and you're about to see one here in just a second. I realized at this point that when I flip it over, as I start to move it around, something isn't quite right. I mean, yeah, I'm moving it and I'm thinking it's, well, it might work and then I'm standing on it and going, okay, it supports me, but something is dreadfully wrong. And when I installed the bracket, check that out. The wheel is no longer able to rotate fully. So how am I gonna fix this problem? Well, I could raise all four wheels up a little bit further right, and basically installing another spacer block or I could take this tool here a little rotary a rotary what is this thing called a, a, vi a vibrating saw I don't even know why, why can't I think what this tool is called either way it made quick work of this and I just took out a little bit of a chunk here I thought it was gonna compromise some of the strength but upon testing it it really didn't so I dodged a bullet but after a little bit of sanding you know it's like it never even happened right <laughs> either way those things happen, mistakes happen, and I figured I'd leave it in there just to kind of show you the realism that does happen out here. Okay, now it's time to tie this whole thing together by installing the faces on the front and the back. The front face is only gonna get 3 eighths of an inch plywood, the back face is gonna get 5 eighths of an inch plywood, and I've gotta do something with the back of this. I didn't leave any room for plywood storage on the back, and that's because I got a little, another secret to show you. There's more to this than meets the eye, and well, as I go hang out with my little dude here, uh-oh, Keep it G-rated, bud. What you doing? He loves counting. He has learned all the numbers up one to 100, and he grabs everything that marks in this shop. It's fantastic. Now it's time to load it up. I install the shelf and get to work installing roughly seven to eight sheets of plywood on this before I need the extra storage. Oh, it feels so glorious to do so. But first, I've loaded up roughly seven sheets of plywood here. However, I sometimes order 10 to 12 at a time. And this has a little secret feature you saw me working on earlier. Not really a secret, but check this out. This is, well, this is my first time trying it and I hope it works, so. Of course, you can extend it out probably, I don't know, six, seven inches maybe. Works well. Woo! So, she's calling this a house. <laughs> I may be in trouble. Anyway, I'll show you one more cool feature. <clears throat> one more cool feature. Check this out. 
Okay, these are pre-made French cleat strips. That's right, it stores long pieces that get awkwardly placed all over the shop right there in the A-frame. Perfect. So if you're curious about the backside of this A-framed plywood storage, yes, it is a cleat wall. Would it be nothing other than that? I don't think so. This is gonna be a perfect place to store some clamps, really to store whatever you want. But I do wanna thank Pony Jorgensen for really helping me outfit this. I'm gonna link them down below, their site, their Instagram account, check them out. They have done a complete revamping of their brand and what they offer nowadays is fantastic. So check them out down below. Everything is in the description. So I've got this cleat holder in my hands right here, going against convention here. I am storing, yes, bar clamps horizontally. Most people store these vertically, but going against the grain, checking this out, I think I like it. Hi. Okay. Of course, I got my little helper, always inquisitive, checking things out. Okay. Now what? All right, half scotch. <laughs> now you wanna put it back? Put it back. Very nice. All right. Very good. Again, thanks for being patient with us. This is such a cool moment for us. One more. Good enough for me. High five. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, goodness. So proud of her. All right. So here it is. Clamps on the backside of a mobile sheet good storage unit. Man, I can't tell you how many things I wanted to cram into this one little beauty. And it was awesome. All right. That's it, guys. Project complete. This was a much, much needed addition to this shop. And I am so thankful to get this thing done. This has been a crazy journey for me, building this shop and doing these projects each and every week. And I thank each and every one of you. The channel has received a lot of growth lately over the past three, maybe two to three months. And I am so thankful for you guys. Now, that being said, I wanna say this too. If you wanna help support this channel even further, more than your viewership, again, it is no pressure. I am not asking in any stretch of the imagination for you to feel obligated to do so. But we do have a Patreon campaign. I'm gonna list it down below. There are quite a few cool tiers down there where you can, you can get some pretty cool rewards. I definitely want you guys to check that out if you're interested, but no pressure at all, okay? All right, that's it for this one, guys. Thank you for joining me. I hope you got some value out of this. And I think this little addition here down there, that little extra storage is gonna come in super handy. So that's all I got for this one, guys. Thanks again, and I'll see you on the next project. No joke. First one to comment, rubber baby buggy bumpers gets a free hat. I'll ship it to you. I'm being serious.